1,000 new electric car chargers are being built every week in the United States. 1,000. That is a remarkable turnaround. That is a huge success. Here are the numbers behind what's happening in the United States when it comes to EV chargers. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. EV charging. Guys, of course, you can do it at home. You can use your own solar. No one's, well, almost no one ever has a gas station pump at their house, right? So that's just amazing. <laughs> I love the fact that you can do that. But imagine having a gas station pump at your house that was free and uh, didn't gas you out with, uh, you know, I'm getting off track here. But my point here is to say, you know, we can do it with our own solar. Speaking of our own solar, I have a new solar system here. I'll do a video on it very soon. It's coming. The solar system I've got is quite a big one and it's incredible. We're not even out of winter here yet. We're, I'm in Newcastle, guys. It's the very, very end of winter. But today I was still generating about 16 kilowatts, so I should say, of electricity every single hour. Amazing. Anyhow, if you guys want to know the solar, solar company I used, Resync Solar, I'll put a link in the description. And if you use that, apparently they'll give you a bit of a discount um, just by virtue of supporting the electric revolution. Anyhow, the Biden-Harris administration, right? They said the number of publicly available EV chargers has doubled since Joe Biden took office. I don't really like those kind of statements. They're obviously political type things, but hey, it is actually true. So that's actually pretty damn impressive. And what's even more impressive is the amount of money that's been committed to be invested into electrification in America. It's now higher than that that's been committed to electrification in China. I mean, how's that possible? But it is. If that all goes ahead, if it's not canceled by Ford or General Motors, if it all goes ahead, then there's gonna be an incredible electric revolution in the United States. Over 192,000 publicly available charging ports are now available in America. 192,000. There is 1,000 being added every week. The federal government has awarded $521 million in grants to further expand the U.S. national charging network. New charges are being deployed across 29 U.S. states and two federally recognized tribes and the District of Columbia. I'm a bit confused, though. Why only 29 states? I mean... What about the other, you know, 23? Yeah. U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg emphasized the importance of what's going on here. He said the Biden-Harris administration has been clear about America leading the EV revolution. And thanks to the historic bipartisan infrastructure law, we're building a nationwide EV charger network to make sure all drivers have an accessible, reliable, and convenient way to charge their vehicles. Now, is... The United States leading the EV revolution worldwide. That's honestly, Pete, if you want, obviously Pete Goodigan doesn't watch the channel, but if you are Pete, mate, don't make stupid comments because people just think you're an idiot. What you guys are doing is fantastic. I love it. But when you say the US is leading the electric vehicle revolution worldwide, yeah, that's garbage. That's just ridiculous. Come on, you're so far behind China when it comes to EV charging and EV rollout and EV sales. It's just you're miles behind. Yeah, you're doing great. It's going in the right direction as long as you don't start banning every single Chinese product, um, you know, banning Chinese battery cells and all, and even licensing of Chinese software. That's getting to the point of just insanity. Aside from all that madness, it's true. I think the EV rollout in terms of charges is going incredibly well. The EV tax incentives, in my opinion, they're fantastic. A lot of people hate me for saying that. I don't know why, but they're very emotional about this. I think they're fantastic. They're driving the EV industry in the right direction. The $521 million investment is divided into two key areas, 41 community projects, 321 million, and 10 corridor fast charging projects for 200 million. The grant awards support President Biden's Justice 40 initiative, which aims for 40% of the overall benefits of federal investments to flow to disadvantaged communities with over half of the funding going to sites in disadvantaged communities. I'm not sure how you can qualify to become a disadvantaged community so you can get the funding, but anyway. Community projects include, in Milwaukee, nearly 15 million will be used to install level two and DC fast charges at 53 sites across the city. 
Now, there's so many projects going on here, guys, that it's probably pointless to be mentioning them all to you, but I will point out the fact that a lot of this is, you know, coming from the government partnering with private companies. So it's kind of a, a combination. Really, the government is not just paying for this. It looks like a lot of Republicans would say this, and to put it, probably a lot of Democrats as well. Let's say all that's happening is the government's sponsoring this, they're paying for everything, they're building out all these fast charges, um, EV sales, the only reason EVs are selling is because the government's actually paying for everything. That's what people will say. That's not the case at all. These investments, you know, putting billions of dollars into electrification, putting billions into far, into charges, that is in combination with private um, investment. I mean, Tesla is not getting uh, paid money to build out their supercharger sites for free. If they were, they'd be building out hundreds of thousands. They'd be like, oh, give us, we'll do all of them. We'll do every single one. It doesn't work that way. These private companies have to invest themselves as well. So I think it's a really good, a really good situation where private industry is being subsidized enough to get this happening because really there's not that many electric cars in the United States. And at the start, you need some subsidies, right? To get it going, to get it off the ground. A lot of people say, I don't want to buy an EV. There's not enough fast charges near me. I live in an apartment block, blah, 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 something like that. But they won't be able to say that very soon. So really, this is putting a situation in place where so many more people will feel more comfortable to buy an electric car. Corridor projects include, I'm just going to point out a few of these because I think these are interesting. Nearly 12 million to build a DC fast charging hub at Atlanta airport featuring 50 DC fast chargers. So guys, when you leave your electric car at the airport, maybe you just go for a trip, for a day trip, those are the kind of situations where you know you park your vehicle in one of the day park sites. They're different to the long-term stays. So they'll put a lot of DC fast chargers in these day park sites. Plus, they'll put them where taxi cabs can use them. So electrification will happen in these cities. That's particularly important in cities to improve air quality where really I, I genuinely feel sorry for people living in dense cities where the air is still pretty shocking in the United States. In most places, it's pretty terrible. There's still quite a few coal power plants that's also adding to the pollution. People don't realize just how bad this is. I mean, why is there an increase in cancer rates? That's one of the drivers for that. So yeah, I do personally obviously have some connection to that and I do feel sorry for that. And I just don't think people realize there are so many pollutants that we're being affected by, we're being poisoned by. So having these DC fast chargers at airports, it discouraged, I mean, a lot of taxi drivers, a lot of Uber drivers, rather than sitting there idling their cars, because you know, that's what taxi drivers do. They sit there and idle their cars constantly, have the heaters on, air conditioners on, stereos on. They don't have to do that with an EV. So that's already a big improvement, right? In your immediate air quality right around you. These charging rollouts are gonna be hugely, hugely beneficial for the uptake in EVs. I think once you buy an EV, you go, oh, okay, ownership is really good. There's no reason to change. And you start telling your friends, hey guys, get one of these. There's charges everywhere. And guess what? I just got solar. Get solar as well. Charge your EV on your solar. Guys, the future, honestly, the future is amazing. It's gonna be incredible for our children. As long as we keep pushing it in this direction, we need a bit of a nudge, need a bit of a push. We need some positive stuff. You know, guys, on the channel, I know I've gone about, gone about this stuff. I'm telling you, install solar, and it's a no-brainer. There's research saying 50,000 US dollars is your saving, right? Over the life of the solar system now, 50,000 US dollars. So encourage your friends to get it. If you don't have a system, get one of these. Charge your EV, you know, using your solar. This is the kind of stuff that you guys, I know you're leaders in your industries. A lot of people look to you and they think, this, this, this guy's, you just bought an electric car. Um, this is one of these people who aren't scared of change. So publish this stuff on your social media profiles. Tell people what you're up to. Show them the EV you've got. Show them your solar system. And let's support the electric revolution that's going on right now in America. Thanks for watching.